Hello, my name is Carol, this is my channel So Carol, and I'm doing a fun little video today. This is five of the reasons I'm still an old school sewist at heart. Five things I still do that I learned in school. This is my school uh, notebook, exercise book that we had to do. This dates back to, it's got year five on it, so I would have been about 14. Um, beautifully neat written book and it's just got everything in it about sewing but I realized when I was making something the other day just how many of these processes I still used when a lot of the world have moved on certainly with indie patterns now some of these techniques that we used to use just aren't there anymore but I'm sure that a lot of you are, are like me and you still like doing certain things Let's start a discussion in the comments about who's an old school sewist and who isn't. Um, there's no right or wrong, um, it's just whatever works for you. And certainly the things I do now may be time consuming, but they just work. And in the end they save me time. So with the help of this book, I'm going to just run through five of the reasons. Number one is I still use, I cut out with dressmaking shears and I have many, and I use pins. I use good old pins. Now, a lot of you, um, and I have got one, and that's a rotary cutter, but I just don't get on with it. For craft products, quite happy, but for dressmaking projects, I'd rather a pair of scissors. So I do tend to use that, and pins, I made some pattern weights a few years ago, um, lovely little of these triangle ones with rice in them, but I just don't use them. I still use pins. Now, of course, the benefit of the rotary cutter is just they're so quick, and I know that, but because I don't always keep my blades sharp, I end up having to go across a bit, and then you half of it is cut out and half of it isn't, so you then get a pair of scissors anyway. No. No matter what anybody says to me, I will still use scissors. And another reason is you get that beautiful sound, don't you, when scissors go through fabric. So you miss out on that with rotary scissors. Number two is I still do tailor tacks. And I have tried many things to mark da, um, dots. So these are marking the little dots that you get on the pattern. Yes, I've tried erasable markers and sometimes I will use that. But I find then if I'm pressing it, I might put the iron too far or I've ironed it first and then the mark's gone and then I have to get the pattern piece back out again and I then have to mark it again. Sometimes when I'm doing a project with lots of pieces, I just sew the tailor tacks like we used to. This one, for example, if there's a small dot on the pattern and there's a larger dot, I still use two colours so I know which are the large dots and which are the small dots. I have to say though, I now only go through once. So that's a double, um, double thread on the needle and I go through once. In the old days, and if I've got a bit more time, I will go through once, cut it, and then go through twice. But most of the times, this works for me. When I was looking up tailor tacks in my book, I came across something. It was instant tailor marker, plastic handles which holds a special needle available in two sizes and contains a bobbin for thread. I've actually drawn a picture of it here. Now, I don't even remember ever seeing anything like this before. That looks ingenious to me to do tailor tacks. So I actually looked up on eBay and Etsy and things like that and you can still get them. Prim, I think, used to actually make one. Now I want to see if I can get hold of one of those but unfortunately they're only available in America and the shipping cost is quite high. But I really want to see if I can get hold of one of those. If you have one and you've ever had a go at it, please let me know if it's worth me buying one if I'm still a tailor tacker because it just looks ingenious. So yeah, please let me know. The only downside is with tailor tacks is when you've sewn a seam, trying to get them out is really tricky sometimes. Yanking these things out. And I will very often be wearing something and suddenly look down and see that I've still got a tailor tack on it. But 
yeah, I'm still a tail attack person. Number three, and this is talked about a lot, I'm still a notch cutter. So when you know, when you come across these triangles, I cut out a triangle on the fabric as well. If there's one or two or three, I'm still a notch cutter. Now, if I'm making something like a t-shirt and I know things are gonna line up, I, I tend to not do anything. But if I've got pieces like this pair of trousers I'm making with many, many bits and pieces, I will definitely cut out proper notches. I've tried to do the clips into the fabric, but no, it just works for me. I just find it so much clearer and so much visible to see. And if I've missed one, I get really, really cross with myself. But yeah, I'm a notch cutter. Now the next one is basting. I still hand base quite a few things especially if it's something like a zip going in. Um, I won't baste it on the machine because it's too fiddly and I find it moves and I will hand baste things. Um, uh, if you're putting a piece of elastic through a waistband, quite often if there's a seam in the waistband, I will hand baste it down so that the elastic doesn't get caught as I'm trying to feed this elastic through. So in my guide, I have a beautiful picture that I've drawn here, which I actually got told off for because it says I should have even stitches and spaces. My sewing teacher was not my best friend. I've said that many a time. That's an interesting looping diagram that I did there and certainly that. And it does say that I should be finishing off with a double back stitch. I don't very often do that. But in general, I follow most of the rules and I do hand based. The last out of the five that I still do, and I'm sure, like all the others, I'm sure lots of you out there do it, is I still find the straight of grain using a tape measure against the selvage of the fabric. So that's when you put a pin in the centre of the straight of grain, the line, and then you would measure out to the selvage and then you would measure this distance to the selvage and the top, so you do the top and the bottom and they should be the same as the middle. I still do that, especially if it's something like this, um, like a pair of trousers, especially a woven, yeah. It's just worth, I know I eyeball a lot of what I do, but just if you're slightly out of kilter on a woven fabric, it's gonna drive you insane because it's gonna twist. So yeah, I still do that. So despite my sewing teacher said I was useless, I still do a lot of what she says. So those are my five reasons and I'm sure there are so many out there of you that do exactly the same, but there may not be. So let's start a discussion. In this book, there's so much that I could show you, but I will just show you quickly. We obviously had some patterns and we had to copy out the pattern cover, the line drawings and the pattern pieces and I was quite intrigued. I have to say I was super neat back then. I, my writing's not like that now but yeah I was intrigued because it actually had the pattern numbers. So at the end of this video I'll put you the picture up and I will put the pattern numbers that I've managed to find um, with the wonder of Google and the internet to see what it actually related to. And then I realised how old I was when I saw the patterns that we obviously had to do. At the back of this book is obviously a speech. It says, speech on budget and clothing. I will read you a, a bit of what I said back then. The cheapest place to buy clothes, example, Primark Chelsea Girl Snob. None of those shops exist anymore apart from Primark. Even though these items are cheap, they are very cheaply made. Plaids, checks and patterns do not match up seams. They are never generous seam allowances or well-finished seams. The stitching sometimes even pulls and puckers on the first wear. Now, there we go. We should be kinder to ourselves with our seams because we try and match wherever possible, don't we? We give ourselves good seam allowances. We try and make sure our seams are well-finished. So it says it all, doesn't it? We try so hard to be perfect. But actually, when we compare our stuff to shop-bought, what we do is far superior to shop-bought clothes 
even when you're spending a lot of money sometimes. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining me. If you ever want to know any more from my book, any of the show, any of the pictures, please let me know. And um, it really is a piece of history, this book, but it covers absolutely everything. Um, I don't need any sewing guides when I have this. Uh, thank you again. And I will chat to you in the comments and I will see you on hashtag Friday Sews, if not before. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you.